working with teenagers is a, an absolute passion of, of mine. It is something that I absolutely love to do. I tell people all the time when mums and dads contact me that my favourite age group in the world to work with is between about 11 and probably about 17, 18. And there's a number of reasons for that, but one of the main ones is that when uh, a kid is that age, so somewhere between 11 and 18, they tend to accept change very, very quickly. They just change like this. It's almost sometimes surprisingly easy to be able to change someone's mind uh, when they are in that, that age group. The world now for kids is a very, very different place. And one of the things that I tend to work with the most is I work with anxiety problems in children. So it tends to be that when they move between that, that P7 uh, and into high school, that things really start to change. The pressure becomes much, much bigger. And this is the, the basis, if you like, of a lot of the work as well that I do in schools nowadays is try to take some of that pressure off. We have so many pressures now on kids about pass and fail, do right and wrong, uh, do this, do that, where are you going? And some of these questions are really, really valid and absolutely have to be asked. But for some kids, they've just not got the strategies yet to be able to deal with that. And what happens is it starts to manifest itself in some really, really curious ways. Panic attacks are a, a favourite. Um, they are one of the most common things now in teenagers, becoming more and more common. And my big thing is that, and, and I hope there's a parent listening to this that, that would at least phone and, and speak to us and find out that you do not have to medicate your child. Uh, the, the doctors now are, are very, very limited. They do fantastic work. I'm not anti-doctor at all. This is not nothing to do with that. They are limited in where they can send somebody, especially at that age. Send them to a local mental health uh, group such as uh, CAMS or something like that, if that's something that exists in the area. Uh, they can maybe uh, send them to somewhere which is a wee bit more uh, specific client. Uh, around Glasgow, for instance, there's a priory clinic that can sometimes be uh, referred to, uh, referred to for a thing called cognitive behavioural therapy, also known as CBT. Or sometimes, in the most extreme cases, they'll medicate uh, the child and maybe give them some sort of drug to be able to cope with these symptoms. It doesn't have to be like that. The child's mind has basically just got into a state where there is no strategy to be able to deal with what's happening and therefore your kid isn't broken. Your kid's just using the best response that it has available to it at that time. So what he or she is doing is the best response at that time. And if that's anxiety, that's anxiety. If that's a fear of dogs, then that's a fear of dogs. If that is... Uh, not wanting to get on a plane or not wanting to go to school because they've started to refuse school. There is something happening inside their mind. If I can use a, a little example, which is to think about a lemon. And as soon as you start thinking about a lemon, what often happens is your mouth starts to water. Because what happens when you start to think about a lemon is you run a picture in your head and your mind will respond as if it's real. This is what your teenager or your child is going through every day. There is a picture in their head that they're running. If they believe they're going to be bullied when they go to school, whether they are or whether they're not, if they run that picture in their head, then they're going to get that fear. If they run a picture of uh, something tragic happening or the worst case scenario, if they run that picture in their head, their body will respond and they don't have the filters and the ability to rationalise like we do as adults. So therefore, what happens is it gets a wee bit carried away and it can get stuck and it can feel as if they're broken, almost as if they're in this one state of mind when they're not. It is absolutely 100% possible to change that and to change it like this. My average length of time working with a teenager on average would normally be two to three sessions. That's two to three hours and we're talking about making a massive difference, about switching it off and about having no symptoms. If you are get any questions, if you want to check on how this works, or even if you think, I don't know if this would work with my particular child, just give us a phone and we'll be more than happy to speak you through exactly what's going on and how we would go about helping you. If I can say, come to us, and then if we think that the best place for you is medical and to go to your GP, I promise you we will tell you, go to your GP. But come to us and just at least ask us first and we can give you some advice and we can go from there. Thank you.